Hey everyone, Ari Mapur here, and today we're going to look at a comparison between OpenAI's ChatGPT GPT-4 engine compared with Google's Gemini Advanced engine. And we're going to look at how each of them perform writing code given a specific prompt. We're gonna look at a few examples. We're gonna focus primarily on uh, the Python language and we're going to stack them one against another. But something special for this one is we're going to do this in real time. So join me and let's get started. So what I have up here are two windows, Gemini Advanced and ChatGPT, GPT-4 in this case, completely brand new, chat prompts over here that I'm going to run in real time a direct comparison between the two engines. <clears throat> and generally, if you've noticed in a lot of my videos that I focus on generative AI, I have everything kind of teed up for you. I want to do this in real time and give you a little bit of flavor of what it's like to debug a little bit too. So bear with me in terms of hiccups or any other issues that you'll see, but I think this will be really informative. Now, in terms of what we're going to look at, we're going to dive into Python specifically, only with a few specific coding examples. We're really just trying to compare Gemini and ChatGPT, GPT-4, so Gemini Advance against GPT-4 in a writing code environment for Python specifically, with a few specific examples. Obviously, to stack them up against each other, it could be non exhaustive I mean, it could be completely infinite amount of possibilities in order to test against each other different languages, different environments, different contexts. We're just going to focus on a few examples just to give you kind of a flavor of what you can experience when looking at the two against each other. So let's dive right in. So the first example we're going to look at is a very basic prompt, and I'm going to pull that up right now. This prompt is essentially a dir or ls command that you see in linux so dir command in windows ls command i'm essentially asking the engine to develop a script that will give it given an absolute path to a folder will retrieve the metadata each file recursively so going through each subdirectory and then grabbing information about the file object like uh, say the size or a path or name things like that well, I'm, I'm intentionally being a little bit vague here because I want to see what it gives me. So we're going to run this and run this. And then we're going to see and compare the different prompts against each other. So this guy finished first. And what do we have here? This is showing us all the different attributes that we can retrieve in a function. And this over here is running that actual function. Hypothetically, it's supposed to be recursively, but OS walk. Uh, os.walk is not recursive, um, although it functions like a recursive, it uses file pointers. But um, it looks like ChatGPT also pretty much generated the same code. So we're going to test it out. And we're going to run Gemini first. So in this case, I'm going to use the path of the, this is interesting, this asks me for an input, enter the absolute path. I haven't used something like that since like QBasic. Um, okay, so now uh, I am going to use the path of this file. I'm gonna run it, make sure it works. And all right, that worked for that. Obviously I haven't tried it recursively. I could, uh, could try moving this file to a repository that I have. Then running test.py. Oh yeah, look at that. That's definitely seems like it traversed through quite a few different directions there. So that seems to be working. Okay, now let's go back and do the chat GPT version. Okay. So now, uh, 
Okay, we're going to copy from here. Now we're going to run test pi, and that seems to have done the trick. Okay, I mean, this is very, very trivial, so I, I would expect both of them to work uh, the same way. So that's the first example that we have over here. So now we're going to get into something a little bit more complicated in terms of code structure and what we're asking. So let's pull up our next prompt. So this is interesting. This there is a website called ycombinator.com. There's news.ycombinator.com. And that shows kind of like uh, all the different news summaries, things like that, but in a very basic URL source, HTML source, which is really nice for scraping and uh, great to use as examples. So um, I have this prompt. And you'll see over here, this is kind of lengthy. So I actually initially wrote this prompt, as you can see here, write a Python script using beautiful soap or scrappy that scrapes the top news headlines from HTTP slash slash news dot y combinator and output them to a dictionary object. Um, here's a snippet of the page source. So I tried to do this without giving the snippet and both engines got equally confused. So I needed to really give it the source and then it can learn from that source and then write a parsing engine. So I'm gonna run this, that, and we're gonna see how well it does. Oh, well, this isn't good. So this says, I'm sorry, I'm not able to scrape the website using beautiful soap or scrappy at this time. That's definitely not what I asked it. I asked it to write a Python script. Now I have run this before and in my article that pairs with this video, I got it to work. I bet if I run it again, it might be able to work. Let's see, let's look at the drafts and see what happens. This worked over here. Let's go ahead and run it while this guy is thinking. So here, hmm. okay, well, that doesn't work either. So let's see here. This is looking for response.txt. None type object has no attribute.txt. Well, this is one thing I really like about ChatGPT. I'm going to give it that error, see what it says. This is actually rather surprising um, because this worked for the first time. Actually, this worked many times for the past. OK, so if you see over here, it has multiple drafts. And how, how this works, the LLM works, is that <clears throat> it tries to statistically determine what's the next uh, text that it wants to write. So based on also what it's scraped and what it's read on the, on the web, based on what my prompt is and what I'm asking it to do, statistically, it's figuring out what's the best way to answer the question. So this is the primary, and then this is secondary, and then this is the tertiary. So this is the third pick where it thinks this is the best fit for me. Unfortunately, this is the actual fit. So it got it wrong the first time. I don't know what happened there. Let's go run the chat GPT fix over here. It says to address this error, we should check to ensure that the title tag is not none. Okay, um, let's give it a shot. Does this work? Nothing. That's not good. Okay, well, let's go to this guy over here and see how well it does. So we're taking from Gemini now. Let's see if Gemini can solve the problem. Oh, it did. OK, so both have issues. I bet if I work on this a little bit, it'll, it'll be able to resolve itself in ChatGPT. But in this case, it's interesting. Both of them worked many, many times that I've tested this, but both of them failed during the video. So this was really a, quite an interesting experience um, with everyone here. Uh, I definitely like to hear your comments if you think that you've seen this type of behavior with these, uh, with these engines. 
for. Anyways, we're going to move on to the next example. I'm sorry. I'm going to mark a point against ChatGPT4, even though this has worked flawlessly many times. Uh, I'm going to move on from this example. Okay, so I've got one more example here, and I'm really saddened about the uh, web scraping activity. I, I, I was really surprised that ChatGPT couldn't get it. I'm sure we could have debugged the code and found, uh, found it. You know, it was maybe missing one line or two lines, something very, something very, very small or insignificant. But uh, I, I wanted to give a fair chance against Gemini to demonstrate that it was just as capable or more capable than GPT-4. And in this case, it made the mark for, um, for that example. Now we're going to try something a little bit different. This is creating a full stack web application. It's got a front end and a back end. And I'm asking it to show the charts of these four stocks. So let's see how it does. Again, I've run all of these examples before. Some of them have worked, some of them have not. Uh, in the past, um, both engines have had their ups and downs. But, um, but let's, let's give it a shot. OK, this is interesting. This gives me a full project structure, which is kind of annoying. Um, but that's OK. We're going to give it a shot anyway. So I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to call it stock chart. Okay. And we have app.py. Okay, let's grab app.py. Got it here. And what else do we have? We need requirements.txt. Nice. Okay. And here are my requirements. Okay, so it wants chart.js. So um Okay, this is uh this is a little bit more than I had asked for. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead with it, but but this is this is a little bit more involved than I was hoping. Um, this is asking me to go download this chart.js and place it in a static folder. Um, I don't know how I really feel about that, but um, let's, let's see if we can do it without chart.js. Can you create this without me having to download something? chart.js.org. Okay, and then let's go back to the GPT as well. Okay, so here, this is telling me to download uh, all these requirements here, create this Flask application, and then create this HTML template, and another HTML template, and then run this application. Okay. So here, we've simply replaced the local chart.js script reference with a link to the CDN hosted version. OK. OK, so now, oh, interesting. This is what they did over here as well. This is, yeah, OK. So you don't really need to download chart.js. Again, you got to take all this stuff for a grain of salt. I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're doing this in real time because this is, it, it's good to, to air out all of these issues here. So first of all, um, it's C script source. This is an HTML. It's going to pull this chart and download it. It's going to pull that source code and download it. To tell me that I need to go download this and place it in the static folder, um, I'm not sure why it's doing that. That seems to be some sort of hallucination. So we're going to go ahead with this example, and we're not going to download it, and we're going to try and run it. Let's see. OK, so the HTML template, this is called templates index. So let's do um, templates and then code templates index.html. That there. Great. And then I think that's really it, just app.py and templates. And then we can run, let's run this. 
Okay, no matching version that satisfies chart.js. So I think this is a hallucination, but um, but let's uh, let's try and run this. So I'm going to go into here and app. Hi. Okay, so now preview and edit. Look at that. Oh, wow. It actually looks really nice. I like I like that. The, the mouse over. Okay, that's really cool. Uh, this is kind of not so cool. And then you can see all these different charts. Okay, so few interesting things here, as you can see. First of all, we did not need to go download chartjs.org. Uh, we did not need to download the static file. And we also, this pip package doesn't even exist or it's hallucinating something or it gave us the wrong information. Obviously not. So um, again, I, I'm going to give a few, we're going to mark down a few points on Gemini for giving me the wrong instructions. This is fine for people who are advanced, who understand how to do um, full stack applications, um, or at least understand the back end and the front end. But I'm... I'm a little disappointed with its hallucinations because some more junior developers or people who are not familiar with this type of code would, you know, be spinning in circles trying to figure this out. Okay, let's look at this example on GPT-4. So this has also asking for us to pip install these things. I think there's going to be a problem. Well, Okay, I thought the capital flask was going to be a problem, but it's not. So let's go back. We installed, we ran a pip. Um, this is our app.py. Change this. Then let's go to HTML template. So this is index.html. Change that. And then we also need to create a new file. Uh, we need to create a new file called charts.html so code doc chart charts HTML. all right and let's just look quickly through the code you see over here so this is calling charts.html you see over here um let's go ahead and run this let's make sure we did everything so it's three files good and then it says to run your application python app.py so let's just follow there example let's see how this goes preview editor you start okay this is cute it's got a landing page and then it takes you into a stock charts app let's see that okay um that's also got a nice rollover mouse over that's cool i like that the candlesticks with the high and lows um not sure i how i feel about the ghetto hyperlinks and the landing page but um, this definitely, definitely does the trick. Um, so I'm going to say both were functional, um, some hallucinations, but, but both of them definitely were, were functional and, and were working. So again, it's, it's hard to really you know, say whether, whether one is better than the other. Um, you know, the, the previous example, Gemini gave us the answer, but we had to dig for it. it give us as the first answer. It actually also hallucinated into thinking something else or didn't understand our prompt. Um, and GPT didn't get it right the first time, but I'm sure that if we had corrected it enough times, it would have been able to resolve it. Either way, um, I'm not really convinced about either. Um, I'm The verdict is not out. Uh, and so I'm going to continue playing with both of these uh, for the next couple of weeks and see how it goes. So today we took OpenAI's ChatGPT GPT-4 engine and stacked it up against Google's Gemini Advanced engine to see who could write better code. In the end, both of them kind of had their own issues and both of them were able to achieve the tasks that I had set them out for, more or less. Again, some of them had fumbled and in the past I've seen them work in this particular video in real time, we watched them fumble. And uh, it was, I'd have to say, a little embarrassing for both of them. But at the end of the day, there's still a lot to do and there's still a lot for both companies to implement in order to make it a really bona fide automated code generator. So if you enjoyed this video, 
Hopefully we'll be doing some more videos of the like, but in the meantime, please check out the rest of the videos in this channel and definitely hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.